if Dan's got some time, we'll do a little Q&A yeah, and we'll absolutely. bounce some questions out there and we'll answer all your questions the best of our abilities and go from there. So let's do it. This is my best. This is, this is my favorite part of the whole show. Just the yeah, Q&A. It's so laid back, right? It's just like. Oh, yeah. I, I started some. Let's see. Uh, Trans Extend has a statement, which is pretty solid. DA and you will win regardless. DCA and you will win regardless. I got to tell you, it's like one of those, uh, one of those uh, superpowers. Yeah. And do, you then, uh, do you DCA? Do you DCA? So I, what I've been doing lately is I do what's called micro DCAing, which is because. So we have the show on Fridays. We just didn't do it this Friday. It's uh, me, Ben, and James, and uh, it's the DCA show. And Ben is from into the cryptoverse is, is pretty adamant. He's like, this is not the time to buy altcoins. And James is kind of like, yeah, buy whatever you want. And I'm kind of in the middle because I'm like, I don't really know because I'm not smart enough to really figure it all out. So I thought to myself, instead of continuing on with the same DCA price, let's say, let's say I spend $100 on uh, Cardano every day, right? So instead of doing that, I'm like, I'm going to put that down to like, I'm going to reduce it by about 80% right? Just like 20 bucks a day or a week or whatever, whatever I'm currently doing right now. And I just nibble a little bit. And I, and it, it just goes in line with my rules, which is don't invest more than you can afford to lose. So I figured like, okay, if we go down from the market cap of 820 or 30 billion, and it drops to 400 billion or 300 billion. If I, if I drop that much, 60, 70% of like the, you know, 800 bucks that I put in for the month, it's not going to crush me. And all I got to do is just keep doing that until things turn around. And then maybe I start to sort of micro DCAing. I just small DCA and then go back to regular DCA. And then I really DCA. So right now I'm still doing it, but it's at a select group of cryptos. And what I try to do is even these days, there's only one thing I'm buying every day and that's Bitcoin. Yeah, most of everything else is just once a week. And okay. I just kind of go from there. So interesting. But Dan, what about yourself? Uh I I I think DCAing is awesome. Dollar mm -hmm. cost averaging. I really think it's helpful, especially if you don't have your mind in it and you're just like you want to go do your stuff. Just set it and forget it. I think it I think it's good. You can even look back on data. It's like in the long term it, it could be really it, you're winning. But yeah, win. but for me, I can't do it because I'm like, I'm always watching the charts. I'm oh, always yeah. like, you know, wow, this is looking really uh, overbought. I think we're about to capitulate soon, even if it's in weeks. And it's like, I'd rather just wait for certain events to happen where I'm like, you know, in by the dip mode, especially now that we're like towards what I say is the bottom range. So I'm kind of more just since I'm watching it all the time, I'm like, I buy when I when I'm really feeling it. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So like, like I had Tom crown on the show and, uh, he's a uh, more of a trader. Well, he, he does more trading, but he, even he says around this time, he's got a, uh, a, a holdle, a holdle bag. Mm -hmm. And he's also got his trading bag. Do you have that yourself or is it all trading? I don't trade really. I mean, oh, you don't trade. I, okay. Actually I mess around in KuCoin with like, with, <laughs> with leverage. I do like just for fun. Like it's not like, you know, but that's, that's it. And most of the time I'm losing, like, I'm not a trader. I would not, you know, I would not market myself as a trader. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a macro investor. That's where I'm comfortable. That's where I do well. Gotcha. But Tom, Tom, he's, he's legit. He knows what he's doing. He's really he, good at it. He does. Okay. So let me ask you about the, about the leverage thing. So is it leverage like a hundred X or is it leverage like three X? It's, it's a hundred X. If it's just like, dude, we're pumping. It's like minute by minute pumping. You want to try and ride that wave. <laughs> Um, and then it's just kind of like maybe five, 10 X, you know? Oh my God, Dan. So this must be, you must be a real gambler out there. Don't ever well, take. Yeah. Uh. I used to, um, when I was little, my grandpa used to take me to, to the horses. Ah, and it's okay, like, okay. you don't, he'd always say you, you we're not here to win money. We're here. Like we're here to have fun. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it plays into don't, don't spend or do things that you can't afford to lose. So if you're going to do something like that, like that's something you have to have in mind, but, right. um, and mind you, I will say like, I'm terrible at it. Like, <laughs> but I, it's fun. I, but I'll, it's fun though, right? yeah, I'll enter along and I see like, you know, Cardano is just like falls like 0.1% and I'm like, Oh my goodness. Like that, that zoomed in emotional part. That's not yeah. me as I'm not, I, I don't have that personality at all. Nah, I got you. So, okay. so, so the reason, so like I say, don't use leverage because it's just a blanket statement because yeah. I don't want to people say, well, Rob said this. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
I would forget that too. Don't don't, okay. don't use leverage. Absolutely. Don't yeah. don't do it. Unless okay, you know what it's like. It's like it's like going, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go buy uh, a scratch off ticket today. You know, I'm gonna go. Uh, it's exactly what it's like. Yeah. Right. But I'm not gonna tell you to go. Hey, go get a scratch off tickets. Sell your house. Sell your kids. Sell your kidneys. And put it all in scratch off tickets. Because yeah. if I if I say scratch off tickets, people are like, you know, Rob, I sold both my kidneys, and now I didn't want to even have scratch off tickets. I'm like, well, I don't know what to tell you. Exactly. So just uh, don't don't do scratch off tickets. <laughs> don't do leverage or scratch off tickets. That we're trying yes. to say here. Yes. So this is a comment also transcend. Uh, my wife saved me. I guess this is when you were talking about uh, stable coins, putting everything from your bank account to stable coins. Because mm -hmm. it would have made sense back then, but uh, it would have been awful. Scary. Dr. Payne says, I don't trust Binance or Gemini. And it's a good, well, don't trust anybody, actually. Yeah. And then also Coinbase and Kraken. Let's see, what do we got here? Uh, Dr. Payne says, Dan, this is for you, Dan. Not me, Dan. What's your thoughts on using a self-directed Roth and holding your assets on a hardware wallet? Now, before you answer this, I believe, Dr. Payne, you have set it up as a, as, as a, a corporate structure. So if you're going to do a self-directed Roth IRA, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Doc, you got to set that up as, as a corporate structure, lots of paperwork to do that in a self-directed IRA. So, Dan, do you do, first of all, do you do anything with Roth IRAs with crypto? It's on your screen right there. Yeah, that's I trust. it. But, special but see, shout out, special shout yeah. out to Digital Asset News sponsored. Uh, <laughs> exactly. I trust Capital. Click the link below. Sign up now. Yeah, exactly. No, but well, seriously, I do. I have Cardano sitting in there. I mean, it's 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 a great thing. Like, um, that's that's what I do. Yeah, so that's what I use too. But I will tell, I will stress this with everybody: you don't control your keys with yeah. I trust Capital. And if there was you, recent, I think there was recently some concerns. People were calling them out being like, yo, what's going on? Like they were down for like a day or something, but they're fine from what I was, saw. That was back in March. They were down, it was down yeah. for two days. And they said, we're, we're doing something with them with the, uh, with the website. And of course, everybody's like, no, you're not. You're taking all our funds. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then we, so we had the CEO on and then we did a, a follow-up because people were asking, well, if it's in cold storage, it's in Fireblocks or Coinbase custody. What happens when Coinbase collapses? Because, and people were saying Coinbase is going to collapse at some point. That means that all of our funds in the Roth IRA are now gone. First to go. Take, yeah. And we, so we take a look at, in the terms and conditions, it says very clearly that what, if it's in Coinbase or into Fireblocks, it is a, there's not a commingling of funds. They are segregated. And if the business collapses, the business collapse. What will happen is that you will get transferred back to your funds, but you must pick a new custodian before everything are, are completed. So there is that part where people say, well, Rob, do you trust them? Look, you can't trust anybody. You can't. But I will tell you this. If I lose out and something happens, I don't know. There's an EMP attack and aliens come down. I have no idea. And all my funds are gone from, from, uh, from iTrust Capital. I, it's not going to crush me. Because I can only put in seven thousand dollars per year based on uh, American tax law guidelines, and that's it. So, but if it's not for if it's not for you, and you say I don't want to do that, then don't do it. I'm just saying this is what I do because that is what Peter Thiel did. He put it into a Roth IRA, all his PayPal uh, shares, and they're now worth five billion dollars. And he's going to pay Zippo on capital gains tax when he turns fifty nine and a half, which I think he's a couple years away. That was a long explanation. Sorry. No. All right. Yeah. That's a good Let's... explanation. <laughs> Joseph, what's your thoughts on Bitcoin price? As we came from 67 to 16K, is there, this is a good question. Is there any chance we can cross 70K in 2023? Dan, I know you talked about this on your channel. Do you think that's even a possibility? Even in the macro events? Well, coming out of, um, coming out of the low in 2018, there was a big pump. I don't know if you remember or not. And then it's kind of like, COVID stepped in eventually and it like kind of screwed up the charts a little bit. But I would say this to answer your question, it's obviously anything's possible, but the biggest thing I've been talking about the last few days is because I kind of recently discovered this was in the last 69 years of recessions, bear markets, mm. the year before the recession was, was the worst year. So basically if 2023 is the year of the recession that's defined by all the headlines and Wall Street Journal, because that's what it's looking like it's going to be, 2023 is the recession. Right. That, means, that means 2022 was the worst year. And I really think the headlines that we're going to see about 2023 being the recession 
and all the fear that's there. I really think it's designed to, you know, keep retail out for as long as possible, keep them fearful. Because I think 2023 is going to be, that's where the opportunity is. And I think we could totally see in 2023 some ridiculous pumps. I think it's actually, this is how I see things. It's my opinion. That's it. I mm-hmm. think it's more likely that we see like, you know, 100%, 200% gains. Um, so I think it's it's definitely possible. But, uh, and, and it's really based off of, I think the worst is over. I think the Band-Aid is ripped off. Yeah. But, you know, you never know. I mean, look at, a war comes out of nowhere things like this happen you know and it's just like you you can't you can't predict that you can't predict it and like i i this is another one of my mistakes i thought that the bottom wasn't in because of macro events that were going on globally mm-hmm. one of those being uh, of course inflation of course the war in ukraine the problems with uh, supply side issues i just didn't i thought the bottom was in because of those issues yeah. I did not foresee a total collapse of, well, potentially Genesis, FTX for sure, BlockFi. I didn't see those things happening. So even though I was right, I was wrong in the, uh, in the perspective. But it did make me realize this, and that is that our market is fragile. Mm-hmm. So if something else happens in the contagion, I think that's where we see the next leg down in these things that are happening. But I will say this too, is we had Luna and Celsius and FTX. Yeah. And in this bear market, Bitcoin is not doing anything different than it did last bear market. Like all of that has happened. And the bear market, if you look at cycles, it, it kind of looks the same. Obviously, it led to a capitulation and a leg lower. Yeah. But, but Bitcoin's not doing any worse. And there's still plenty of cushion to the downside. And I will remind everybody that in 2018, when we're, you know, I remember doing videos and it's just like depressing three to four thousand dollar Bitcoin. Everybody thinking, man, we're going lower. This is never going to end. And then boom, in the next six months, Bitcoin pumped 300 percent, you know, by by summer. Yeah. So it's like those things happen in crypto. Usually after everybody just kind of gives up, it's like that's never going to happen again. That's all that. That's just what I've seen over the years. And it's like that's why I'm saying I wouldn't be surprised if, if that happens again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can see that. And then uh, here's a question. I don't, I'm not for sure. We have a chance to ask Dan why he's pushing a security and they aren't available. Look, first of all, we have to define what a what a security actually is. And I can't tell you what it is. And I don't, and even uh, Gary Gensler can't tell you what a security is. It's up to to Congress, the lawmakers to make to distinguish what that actually is and go from there. Well, what's the question? Push. Who's pushing a security? And I'm trying to figure out what the question. We asked Dan why he's pushing a security. Am I pushing a security? What's he- well, we're both called Dan, so it could be me. It could be uh, okay. Let's just say we both are, because let's just let's just assume that. Uh, I every- think he's talking about Cardano. I bet you. I get that comment all the time. Oh well, everything's Cardano. security. Yeah, I mean, well, Cardano. Bitcoin. First off, Cardano has the best one of the best cases. Cardano did a fair launch in Japan. Nothing yeah. was sold in the U.S. Like mm-hmm. Ada, Ada is not a security. So I think that's, I think, that, Mike, if that's what you're referring to, there's my answer. If that's not what you're referring to, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I think it is because Mike's got another question, the same thing. Okay. Dan's obsessed with punching with punching eight of the security. Now they can't be bothered. I love these questions. I so, so like, so here's the question, Mike, I have, I have for you. If Cardano is a security, then we have to assume that everything is a security oh, yeah. besides what would be Bitcoin. So here's my, actually, my, here's my, I guess the bigger question would be this. What if, for example, we all own securities right now uh, in crypto, but do we not own, is it, does anybody else own stocks here? I'm just questioning that. That's a security. So then the question becomes, well, if we do own securities and they're unregulated securities, who gets, who's the problem with? Is it us or is it with the exchanges that sold those securities and or is it with the projects that haven't registered those securities. And it, or it is it with the government who gave us no guideline on, <laughs> and they've had years and years and years, who's it on? But don't, don't like, don't look, look at content creators and, and throw them under the bus. Everything that we cover is, it's, it's strictly our opinion, especially, you know, you and I, right? We, we sit here and we're, we're, we're not sitting here telling everybody to go buy stuff and, you know, FOMO into stuff. This is this is how we view things. It's our opinion. Cardano has been a big part of my crypto journey, so I cover it. 
That's and that's all it is. Nobody's pushing anything. Um, but there's also data that does suggest aid is not a security at the same time. There you go. Well, that's good. See, like, and then you have to understand that um, uh, I am super biased when I talk about these things. So I own all these things, and that's pretty much it. If I don't own it, I usually don't talk about it on the show, and I've made that clear many times. Yeah. Also, this is a good one. Crypto run is the most helpful dude with the most negative dude in crypto in one video. Dan, that would be you, the most helpful, and I would be the most hopeful. <laughs> Not Which, help. you're, you're helpful. He's oh, hopeful. Hope. Oh, I said, I thought he said, uh, helpful. Well, that's very nice. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, are hopeful. The most hopeful do negative. I am very negative. That's just how it is. Uh, but I'm only negative in, in the short term. You have to understand. I mean, in the long term, like, look, this is what I think is going to happen. I talked about this, uh, for quite some time. If we take a look at, I think there's going to be, a, uh, a recession's around the corner. If we just take a look at T-bills, treasury yield spreads, I mean, even going back into July, uh, there, was a flip, there was a flip from the 10 and 2. And once that happens, it's predicted every, every recession from 1955 to 2018. So what does that mean? Well, that means we're probably going to get a recession. And if we get a recession, who cares? So we know that 2023 is going to be a bad year, a tough year. How long do recessions last? About 18 months. So what does that mean? That means we're going to have suppressed prices or chop sideways for quite some time. But these are all the recessions from the last, gosh, 40-some years, 50 years or so. And when we're taking a look at these, you can see that in between, there's economic booms and growth. Then there's a little recession, then booms and growth. Then recession, booms and growth, and so on and so forth. So if we get another one, we got 18 months of some choppy sideways action. I don't really care. And that's where I've made all the money before. And that's where I think people should look to, just like what Dan was talking about before. So that's, that's how I see it. Dan, am I wrong here? Am I off? I think you're right, but I would I'd push back on one thing, which is mm -hmm. I think we use the word recession and we say, man, there's a recession coming in next year. Yeah. And we think that the markets can't do well. And, uh, and, yeah. I, and I was reading an article that they made a great point. The market is not the economy. They are right. two separate things. So while there's a recession, and we we just talked about 69 years worth of recession data, the year before the recession is the is the worst year. So that's why, and I'm not trying yeah. to be too hopeful and optimistic. I'm not. But when I see data, <laughs> like, when I see data like that, you know, I don't like the bear market. So I I do kind of I, I want to keep that in mind for myself to take that into account. Just because there's going to be a 2023 recession potentially doesn't mean like prices and the markets are crashing. It could be actually opposite. So I'm just remembering that myself. That is a good point. It's a great point. And then also, I know people are waiting for, um, they said, well, everything's going to rebound as soon as, as soon as the pivot happens with the sure. Fed. Yeah. But the Fed, once the Fed pivots, it's because they've destroyed so much that they're like, all right, our work here is done. Yeah. And then, of course, that's at the very lowest point. So expect things to get even worse after that. Usually, uh, historically, that's exactly what happens. Yeah, it's going to be volatile for sure. I, I got to agree with you on that one. And then uh, Dr. Payne, he, I can't find his comment, but he was talking about the, um, uh, the self-directed IRA. He said, no, 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 it's not a... It's not a um, uh, a corporate structure, LLC, C Corp, S Corp. He goes, I put it into a trust, which is not a bad idea, actually, if you think about it. So yeah. for trust, like we have it for our kids and our grandkids. So for that, we put things in the trust as far as our real estate properties. So what Dr. Payne is saying is that you can do that also with your uh, self-directed Roth IRA, which would be an interesting pr proposition. For you yeah. who want to take a look at it, contact a lawyer, I have yeah. for those it's it's very tr the trust gets a little bit tricky and kind of expensive but you can go that route or you can go yeah. to i trust but whatever all right so let's see what else we got and dan thanks for hanging out with us oh, of course it's good i good i have a i've got this these usual suspects here tesla and nikolai <laughs> performance fuel injection and bicky and i don't know where where Beardy is, but yeah. And then Jarky, who's a legend here, always giving away free uh, memberships. Disney dollars incoming. Uh, let's see. Securities will lead trading halts. I say no. I don't know what that is. Me neither. I think we're good here. Let's see. Ah, Oz is a great question. 
No crypto questions. What software to use to record these live sessions, streams, it looks That's and works funny. amazing. That's what Dan was asking me. And it's called StreamYard. So if there's any up and comers or people who want to use a uh, great software, stream yard s-t-r-e-a-m-y-a-r-d and that's i uh, don't have any affiliate links but uh, you can find them they're pretty great that's funny I, that's yeah see everybody likes this stuff yeah. and now you are hold on <laughs> this is a we'll, we'll we'll end with this one because we're coming up in an hour drakey says i got a question rob and dan in 2015 i started to get paid for my work in in crypto I, whatever it is. And now I get paid in ADA. What coin should I get paid on, paid in if you exclude Bitcoin or Tether? That's a good question. What coin should I get paid if you exclude Bitcoin or Tether? Dan, I'll, you take that one first. Well, I mean, we're all, we're all individuals, right? We all have different <laughs> preferences. Like what, what do you like? Right. Um, if I were to choose, and it also depends, like, where are we in the cycle? What, what's looking good, you know? So it's up to, it's up to you. It's up to you, man. Whatever, whatever you want to accumulate. That's the beauty of it. But, I mean, you're, you're in ADA. It sounded like you're getting paid with ADA now. It doesn't seem like a bad, a bad choice, right? That's one of my, right. my number one. So what do you think, Rob? What would you get paid in? Uh, so, like, I think of it this way. It depends on... And just like you said, everybody's everybody has their own special circumstances, and I, I, I think back. There was an interview with um, Mark McCormick and Lynn Alden on what Bitcoin did, and of course McCormick is a huge Bitcoin, huge Bitcoin maxi, and he was saying that even though he's a Bitcoin maxi, and he talks about El Salvador and and uh, how everybody should get you know paid and. In, uh, in, in Bitcoin, he goes, in all honesty, he goes, if you're in a third world country and you're trying to get paid in these things, not that jarky is, I'm just saying, but he goes, you know, stable coins are where it's at. It actually retains the store of value a heck of a lot more. If you get paid $250 per, per month and you lose 30% in a week, that's, uh, that is in yeah. your entire funds. He goes, yeah. so stable coins, in all honesty, he goes, and he goes, he, he said, even crap stable coins built on Tron work better for a store of value than say like, like what a Bitcoin would do. So yeah. for me, if, if it was me, me, right. Let's say, oh, but he I'm said thinking. no stable coins. It can't be a stable coin. Oh, can't okay, also. So, yeah. So if I had to backtrack and say, what would be, it depends on my, it depends on my time frame. If I'm young Rob, who's like not married and doesn't really give a, a care in the world, I will probably go into something a lot more risky I would say, like, let me see. I would do like, like a, a basket of layer one solutions. Like pay me in, uh, pay me in Cardano, pay me in Avalanche, pay me in Solana, pay me in Ethereum, and just kind of spread that all the way out. Pay me in so Polkadot. The blue chips. The blue yeah. chips. Pay, pay me in pay those blue chips. If, because I'm not, I was never that much of a gambler. I'm like, you know what? Pay me in Gensukishi coin. Uh, you know, XRP. Which like, How about yeah, XRP? Pay, no. <laughs> no well i mean because of what i know if 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 it was me who just got into crypto before i was like yeah pay me an xrp because that's the future that's the standard tell yeah. gary just write that so i would have said that if it's me who's like just trying to be stable and it's not bitcoin or ethereum let me see yeah oh you know what i would say pay me in chain link because to me i'm always thinking to myself if you need outside data what is the one oracle that everybody uses it's got to yeah. be chain link so i yeah. would just use i would just be paid in that and that's a great, it. a great play. Good answer. All right. Dan, we've, we've said it all today. I think we said it all. We did. I think it was good. <laughs> I really appreciate you having me, man. It was uh, very fun, laid back. Love the Q&A. I appreciate everybody out there that's in the, in the chats and, and watching today. Absolutely. And then, of course, as a reminder, everybody check out uh, Dan over at Crypto Capital Venture. Links in the description at the very top. He's got a pretty great show, and especially the things that are going on in the crypto space, because you can't just hear it from me. There's a lot of people out there that are way smarter and way better. So, Dan, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. And everybody, like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Adios.